Alright guys, and welcome to the next instalment in our series, The Mountain and the Beast. And of course guys, we're not that far away from the fight between Eddie Hall and Hathor Beyonce now, only about five months, so we're really starting to see in their training footage a real good insight into how their preparation and training is going for this, you know, spectacular bout of the titans, if you wish. And so far, really, our focus has been on Eddie Hall. We've looked at his technical sparring and we've even managed to get some leaked footage of his full contact sparring in his preparation for the upcoming fight. Of course, I'm going to be doing the same with Hathor and we'll be going back to Eddie and then we'll be doing direct comparison videos also. We've got some really exciting times coming up. But to kick off Four's videos, I wanted to actually just see what Four was thinking about the upcoming fight. To hear his own personal thoughts. Of course, boxing is not just a, you know, a physical contest between two fighters. It is a very strategic sport also. We've discussed this before in previous videos. You know, boxing has a lot of strategy behind it. And really, it's not just about training your body prior to the fight. It's also about training your mind, getting your focus correct, and analyzing your opponent so that you can, and also your own strengths and weaknesses, and being honest with yourself on that, and using that information to create a game plan that you can use to fight your opponent on the day. You know, mental preparation, it really is just like physical preparation when it comes to, to fighting in, in the sense that prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. If you go in that ring knowing roughly what you need to do to defeat your opponent, well, you know, it, it saves a lot of headache on the day, both on a literal sense but also a metaphorical sense also. And I suppose it's, uh, it's, it's time to shut up now and let Four do the talking. I'll be back afterwards um, and I will be giving you my sort of interpretation of what Four has said, whether it's right, wrong, all that kind of stuff. And I'll be sharing with you just some of my own brief thoughts. Um, as I say, there will be more training footage coming of Four very, very soon. But this is just a, a sort of, you know, a little thing just to keep you going whilst I'm editing that together. Alright guys, I will be back in a bit with some more footage from Four, giving his uh, viewpoints on how his training's going also, but for the time being, let's discuss what we've just seen there and also what we're seeing in the training footage that is in front of you and how it relates to what Four told us was his game plan and that is to outbox Eddie Hall and basically tire him out. So first of all, is this the correct game plan? Is it the best thing that Four can do to uh, try to ensure his victory in the upcoming fight? Absolutely, 100%. Four does not really have any knockout power, and we'll go over this in a bit. So he can't go for the big haymakers or anything along those lines, and he's not te technically proficient either. He's not a boxer, but he's giving himself every possible chance he can get by ultimately saying he's going to outbox Eddie and force him to gas out. He's accepting that he probably won't be able to get a knockout, but he can get almost a TKO, if you wish, if Eddie basically collapses to the ground um, completely puffed out. Even if that doesn't finish Eddie off, you know, if there's no gas in the tank, so to speak, if there's no air in the lungs, there certainly is no power in, in the opponent's punches. You can defeat them quite easily. And the thing is, when you get tired as well, you do become a lot easier to be knocked out. So by that, by its very extension, that would potentially compensate for the lack of power behind a lot of force punches. It may, in fact, turn what is, you know, a relatively weak punch into a full knockout punch. Right, let's just get into the itty gritty of what Four is doing right and wrong now. Normally I'll just demonstrate this on the boxing bag myself, but I think it would be more useful for this particular video to just freeze frame and snapshot and, and show you the clips of what Four is doing right and wrong and go from there. 
Let's start with the very first clip I put onto this video, which shows for doing a one-two hook combination. Now, firstly, he's throwing punches and bunches. Something that Eddie hasn't been doing so far, as shown in the previous videos. He's throwing two or three punches at a time. This is fantastic because this starts to work the guard of your opponent. Especially in Eddie's case because, well, we know he tends to move his elbow to try and block a punch, thus exposing himself. So, Four is essentially training to take advantage of this. Now, also notice that when Four throws his hooks, he throws them with a very straight arm. Now, the other way you can throw a hook is, of course, with a bent arm. Both types of hooks have their advantages and disadvantages. A bent arm on the hook, which is typically how I throw my own hooks, um, has a much shorter range, but that's the whole point of it. It allows you to fight up close and personal in the in-fighting range. It also gives it a nice sharpness and can help shake the head according to how you rotate the fist upon impact. You lose all of this by throwing the hook with a straight arm, but you gain a hell of a lot of range and it also gains a lot of momentum. If these things hit, they hurt a hell of a lot, you know, and they don't have, as I say, that kind of same kind of technical edge when they hit you. They don't shake your head, especially when you hit them with the inside fist, just like Eddie Four has this habit. Not so much because he throws a lot of straights, but when he throws hooks, you can see quite clearly that he's it's hit him with the inside fist, which is pretty much a worthless punch. Now, the reason why uh, Four is throwing his hooks in such a manner is because he wants to take advantage of his humongous reach. And on top of that, Eddie's notoriously low guard that we've seen during his own sparring and pad work sessions. However, I'm just going to show you here that Four is indeed making the same mistake. Now, it's a lot harder to spot Four dropping his hands because he's a lot quicker uh, and he doesn't do it quite as often and he is making an active effort to try and keep his guard up, but it's still happening here and there. So as he's trying to wind up the power of the hook, bang, his hand drops into this position. Right, well, in this clip, we actually have a beautiful combination being performed by Four here. It's a jab, cross, jab, left uppercut, right hooking straight um, and that's a lot of punches to throw together and it's really impressive to see him doing you know five punch combinations now most of the time when you get into a fight in the ring you're probably going to be going to get in combinations of two or three punches off it's rare to be throwing this many punches because well as mike tyson says everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth and that's really, you know, doing more complicated sort of combinations. It's when the adrenaline is going through your system, one, your mind doesn't work quite correctly. And secondly, when you're hurting because, you know, there was punches coming back at you, things tend to fall apart. But I applaud him very much for doing this. And I actually like it. He's actually doing it pretty damn well. Let's start picking it apart, though, just on the few things that he's not doing right um, in the hope that obviously improves over time. So we've already seen Ford make an awkward fist um, connection when it came to his long range hook. Well, in here he's making a right straight and you can see how his wrist buckles on the impact with the aqua bag. Now don't get me wrong, these bags are hard and they are heavy and they hurt when you hit. But there's no real excuse when you're wearing gloves and most likely wraps underneath to have that wrist bend. When your wrist bends in such a manner, one, you can hurt yourself. But more importantly, um, in many respects, is that you don't hurt your opponent. Because all the power that you put through your arm is essentially dissipating because you're not making a clean connection through the, the arm into the wrist and then into the fist and then ultimately into their head. Okay, So he needs to strengthen those wrists of his up. And in addition to the buckling wrist, guys, we can see in this photograph also how Four is dropping his left hand um, not only away from his face but also from his body. Um, this comes from trying to hit hard in a similar manner to uh, how Eddie Hall is trying to use his strength to hit. Four's kind of using a swing of momentum to get his punches off. Here we have basic drill work and some basic technique practice against the heavy bag. He seems to be very light on his feet and he does a lot of skipping. Um, if you go to his uh, Instagram or Facebook page, you'll see him doing a hell of a lot of skipping, not only for cardio, but for this whole purpose to make himself light on his feet. My one thing is what I would say about this is I hope in the fight he doesn't bounce quite as much as this because um, one, it can detract away from the power of your own punches um, and it can also make it very easy for you to get knocked over because simply your feet aren't planted on the ground. 
but also, especially when you, you weigh as much as four, um, it can tire you out as well. And it's even more so, as I say, for a big guy. And another common mistake for a big guy to make when they're in a fight, especially as they start to get tired as four is about to here, they begin to push instead of punch. You know, when you punch, there's a real you know, snap, and there's venom to the intent of what you're, to the strike itself. Here we can see in the snapshot that four is literally just kind of making contact with the bag and then using his strength and body weight to push it away, giving the illusion of power uh, uh, in the strike. But this does not do any damage. It just shoves your opponent away. Right, well, you know, at first glance, when you look at this particular clip, it looks a bit kind of boring, very pedestrian, not a lot going on. And I kind of go through that in some ways. Certainly when I first saw it, it took me two watches to spot this. But you'll notice every now and then there's kind of little jerky mo movements from Four in his arms. Obviously, we can see quite clearly him moving his head and stuff. He's doing essentially some shadow boxing, but what he's doing is he's jerking his arms just a little bit, just a tidbit forwards, okay? Now, what he's doing there is fainting. Okay, Eddie has shown in his sparring footage, both during his technical sparring and full contact sparring, that he has a habit of reacting to punches, moving his elbow into position, which is a terrible thing to do, uh, and thus opening himself up elsewhere. What Four is doing here in his kind of like a little bit of shadow boxing on the bag is he is trying to simulate in his head what he would do against Eddie in a real fight. So he's doing the feints to try and get uh, Eddie to react and then go up with whatever sort of a, what he thinks is an appropriate punch. So not a lot to see in this particular clip, but there's a hell of a lot at the same time. Right, in this clip we see four moving on to, again, that really big aqua bag which is on the screen right here, right now. Uh, a bit of fat boy slim for you, didn't know I was a DJ, did you? As you can see in this clip, Four is occasionally leaving his lead hand out. He's using it ultimately as a range finder and we're also a range keeper. So he's using it to keep the range between him and the bag in front. Now, obviously, he can use this in a fight and use it to try and keep Eddie Hall back from essentially closing down the distance and becoming pretty dangerous to him however if he leaves the hand out too long without following it over with a, a real big heavy straight for example he runs the risk of exposing himself and he exposes himself because Eddie ultimately could come in with a left body hook or uppercut to the rib cage that is exposed quite clearly there. Now, of course, because Eddie's got much shorter arms, um, he's going to struggle to hit him with a nice, quick, clean hit. And so normally you would bob and weave underneath that arm and uh, then deliver the strike. However, to deliver a left strike, which would be at first, you know, the most obvious answer or retaliation to this, you would ultimately have to bob and weave to the right hand side and this is where you know southpaw fighters become awkward because although this would work against an orthodox fighter against a southpaw fighter if you bob and weave to the right hand side to deliver a nice big left body blow to the ribs of your opponent well in this case you're going to get your head boxed off by that big heavy straight Four is indeed a southpaw. Eddie would have to instead bob and weave to the left and come in with a big right-handed body blow, um, ultimately aiming for the gut of four, which is equally exposed here. And this could be quite dangerous because what is ultimately exposed here on four is his liver. And you don't really see boxers these days going for liver shots. It's more old fashioned. It's really a technique that the fighters from the early 1900s and prior used to use. You know, those with a bare knuckle uh, boxing background, you know, before the Queensbury rules really came into uh, true effect. But just because it's old fashioned does not mean it's not effective. Literally, a liver shot is a knockout blow. Alright guys, so I think that's enough of an analysis and breakdown for today. Um, I will obviously come back with more and I'm hoping the next video will be uh, some of Four's sparring footage. I just wanted to finish on this particular clip before we move on um, because I really enjoyed Four's training with this fella. Really good stuff. But coming up now, just after this, is Four's thoughts on how his training is going and just really just him just, uh, well being human. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. So I'll see you for now. Uh, stay for the clip coming up and bye bye. All right. Good session guys. Um, 
I'm completely finished. Um, overall, a good session. You know, I can feel it. Uh, it's weak. I'm getting in better, uh, better endurance form, uh, better shape, faster, faster. So, so it's good. It's, uh, it's good. I'm, I'm really enjoying this, and I'm seeing the progress, which is nice. Obviously, when you when when you start a new sport as a beginner, it can be very tough. Uh, especially when uh, you have, you have uh, a lot of people following you and <laughs> a lot of people uh, judge you as a professional in a sport where you're obviously a beginner. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it can definitely be challenging, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying the, the progress. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, I think this is just a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Like always, make sure you subscribe, uh, hit that bell notification. I appreciate the support, guys. Uh, the more support I get, the more content I can bring for you guys. I'm a busy guy that, you know, I'm doing a lot of things in my life. So, um, the, you know, I would love to bring more content, you know, but obviously it can be difficult to find the scheduling. And, and also, you know, when I'm training, I want to be focused in my training sessions. But now I'm getting more used to this different training style. So I'm more comfortable having the camera. So hopefully we'll be bringing more content. And I'm also going to do more collaborations for you guys. So uh, make sure you keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, it's a wrap guys. Peace, I'm out.